This video demonstrates intercorporeal suturing using the tumble knot technique. We will begin with an overview of the advantages of this technique as well as the challenges it may present to surgical trainees. The tumble knot technique will then be described in detail. And finally, we will address common pitfalls that should be avoided during intercorporeal suturing. The tumble knot is a slip knot that can be used to apply progressive tension to close larger gaps between the edges of sutured tissue. The technique is simple, repeating the same instrument movements for each knot throw. It results in square knots, reducing the likelihood that knots will slip after they are tied. The tumble knot is performed intracorporeally, which may prove challenging to those accustomed to extracorporeal knot tying. While the movement of the needle end and free end of the suture are consistent, the operator is required to change the roles of the right and left hand. Finally, this technique is not the dominant method taught to minimally invasive surgical trainees. After driving suture through the tissue, the essential steps of the tumble knot are as follows. Form the C-loop and corresponding throw. Form the mirror image or reverse C-loop and its corresponding throw. Snug and roll the knot to form a slip knot. Slide and square the knot to lock it in place. Here a dyed suture is used to demonstrate the tumble knot technique in detail. The red or needle end of the suture is grasped with the right hand and manipulated to form the C-loop. The left hand first passes in front of the C-loop and is used to form the initial throw. The tips of the left-handed instrument are then used to secure the blue or free end of the suture. The free end is grasped as far as possible from the center of the knot and brought through the looped needle end. The first throw is completed by bringing the right hand to the right and the left hand to the left. The left and right hands are then used together to form the reverse C-loop, a mirror image of the first loop. Again, the free instrument passes in front of the reverse C-loop and the counter throw is formed after grasping the free suture end. The resulting square knot is then tightened, or snugged, again moving the right hand to the right and the left hand to the left. The needle end of the suture is then grasped above and below the snug knot, and tension is applied toward the top and bottom of the screen. This will roll the knot into a sliding configuration, typically resulting in the visible change shown here. After the knot is rolled, the needle end, or post end, is held on tension, while a needle holder is used to slide the knot down. The jaws of the needle holder should be left slightly open to prevent damage to the suture. After the initial slide, traction toward the right of the screen is used to recenter the knot between the tissue edges. Alternating between further sliding and recentering allows the surgeon to apply increasing degrees of tension to the tissue in a controlled fashion. Once the suture is properly tensioned, the knot is squared and locked by applying tension to both ends, again with the right hand pulling right and the left hand pulling left. After the knot is locked, further knots can be tied more easily, returning first to the C-loop and then alternating with the reverse C-loop to place the desired number of square knots. As can be seen here, the locked tumble knot does not slide or loosen while additional throws are formed and tied. This is the chief advantage of this technique. Surgeons learning intercorporeal suturing can improve their performance by avoiding common pitfalls. Here the loop is easily formed around the left-handed instrument, but the right hand maintains too much tension on the loop, making it harder to reach and manipulate the free end. The solution is to move the tips of both instruments toward the center of the knot to be formed, relaxing the tension constraining the movements of the left hand.
If the tumble knot is not properly snugged, it may still be possible to roll and slide the knot. However, this loose knot will not stay in place when progressive tension is applied and it may be pulled entirely out of the tissue. To prevent this, always snug the knot first before performing the roll and slide. When holding the suture to form knot throws, suture directed toward the laparoscope, as shown here, makes the task of forming a loop around the free instrument very difficult. If the suture is held at a 90 degree angle to the instrument tips, or even directed slightly away from the laparoscope, this maneuver is much easier. In this example, the curved tip of the left-handed instrument is pointed away from the held suture, and loop formation is again very difficult. The tip of a curved instrument should always be directed toward the other instrument and angled slightly toward the top of the screen. The surgeon's right hand grips the needle holder with a curved tip directed away from the empty instrument. In this case, the grip is changed by rotating the entire instrument to direct the curved tip toward the left. The tumble knot can be formed using relatively short sutures, and excessive length of the suture's free end should be avoided. Longer suture tails will not readily pass through the loop, requiring additional steps to complete each knot throw. Suture may be pre-cut to a usable length, and additional suture should be drawn through the tissue to shorten the free tail before tying. Attempting to slide a tumble knot before the knot is rolled will not succeed and may damage the suture. The surgeon should ensure the knot is rolled before attempting to slide it. After successfully sliding the knot, failure to apply progressive tension by recentering the knot and sliding it further along the post usually results in a loose suture. Alternating between recentering and sliding the knot before squaring and locking it will ensure a secure stitch.